And we should be live. So as of now, we should be live. Hello and welcome. My name is Brendan. This is the Gospel Gamer. Yes, and it looks like we're live now. Guys, I'm here. What do I think? Let's just get into it. What do I think as a Christian who plays video games in 2024? Not only, of course, a Christian who plays video games in 2024, but also someone who is an evangelist. Or what that meaning, uh, what that means. Somebody who talks about God to people, not per se like a pastor, not like someone who knows everything, not like someone who gets and understands everything, but just as someone who is here to tell their side of the story. And what I think about 2024, what I think about overall, welcome to the Gospel Game Cast. My name again is Brendan, if you didn't catch me the first time, and I'm happy you're here. Please, leave a comment. I'm assuming you're watching this on the watch back. Let me know where you're from, what you're here for, or how God brought you here. Because at the end of the day, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm a believer in the Bible. And no matter how difficult your question is or how intact with sanity that it is, I'd love to hear it, talk to you about it, uh, and etc. So... Why are you here? Where are you from? What do you believe is the reason you're here? Why are you, you, watching this? So anyways, what I've been realizing as I've been pursuing YouTube, as I've been pursuing business, as I've been pursuing gaming, as I've been pursuing, first and foremost, Christ, uh, what I've realized is there's a really big gap at least there has been, and that gap is sort of trying and, and is starting to mend itself together. And what I mean by that is there has been a very big divide, at least from what I've seen, from people who really know God and love God, and they actually pursue, believe fully in faith, Jesus Christ. To people even just on the closest side of the other side of that mountain, where maybe they're just curious, they've heard about Jesus, or they went to a church thing one time, or they went to some random thing one time, or they just felt that the church they drove past was something different than whatever was going on in life, or they've had supernatural experiences, or they've seen dreams of heaven, or they've seen dreams of hell, or they, whatever it is, there's something so big in between that gap and I don't believe, actually not only do I not believe, I truly don't think that it's supposed to be there. And it's not something to be like, oh my gosh, we need to worry about it. Never are we called to do that, right? Never does the Bible say, you need to stress about this because if this happens, I can't move anymore. No, God not only is not trying to make himself seem any different, not scared of you thinking one way, he believes so much in the gospel. I right, get this. He believes so much in himself and what he did and what he's doing and what he does and what he's going to do. He believes so much in that that no matter what is going on right now, he never blinks, bats an eye, squints, kind of goes, oh man, I didn't think about that. Not only because he, of course, knows our beginnings to our ends but just because he believes in the gospel. You won't find anyone with more faith than Jesus Christ. Okay, and I'll get off that tangent. The point is that gap is something that's not to be feared, but it's something that's going to start mending together. Okay, you want to hear the personal belief that I have deep within me. You know, I look at people like Wendigoon, and I'm going to go deeper into that later, briefly. Well, not briefly, who knows. You look at people like <clears throat> Hang Time. You look at people like, I don't know, XYZ. <laughs> no, that's not a person. But you look at these people, and you're like, man, they have so much traction and so much love. And yet, they don't have this huge Bible-based, biblical... You know, Wendigoon, had, for example, has biblical videos about literally just going through the Bible. But, of course, it's not based from, like, this is how to strengthen your faith. And that's wonderful. He's a commentator. 
He is a believer. To my fullness of understanding, he's a believer. And walks that out in a way that's like, wow, this is exactly what you do. And, I, you know, being able to see you blamelessly, you know, just openly st speaking about Christ, that's awesome. Other side, you know, hang time just does cool stuff, kind of like the, the challenge, YouTube challenge craze, or oh, I'm going to do something extravagant with food, spiciest, whatever it's called. You know, being able to just in the midst of that, just be like, hey, I love Jesus, man. Hey, this is a Bible verse. That stuff is huge. Like, that stuff is effective. You think that that doesn't speak to someone? Now, there is a place, you got to hear me before I go into this part. This is where you're going to get a little etchy, especially you strong, hard believers. Right? You people who are like, man, I know the Lord. I walk with the Lord. I'm a prayer warrior. I pray against principalities. Okay. I need to speak on this in a way that can be seen through the eyes of an evangelist. That's, that's my calling. That's my gifting. That's my heart. The Lord has deep driven evangelism into my heart. Okay. God is moving in relational ways today that gap is being bridged by a relationship that gap no matter what is in that gap there's church hurt there's misrepresentations of the bible the gospel the believer god there are so many things that are messed up in that little gap that gap hear me and we're seeing that, at least I'm seeing that, and I believe there's a, from people I've been talking to, individual conversations, that gap's being bridged by those type of relationships. Because, man, that guy's cool, and I enjoyed being able to see that he's just boldly talking about Jesus. When I turned back the dial, was completely in the world, it would have changed my life to hear just even, I mean, look back at 12 years old, if you ever heard them, and this is not a shout out, and I will warn you, if you're going to go to look many of these people up, not Wendigoon to anything I've really found majority of the time, and not hang time that I found at all. But I'm going to be speaking about many people just as a parental advisory or content warning. Don't go looking these up expecting you're not going to find a curse. And I'm going to get in that too. We have about an hour on this. There is, there is a place of... That's a cool guy. You're talking about Jesus. That's awesome. If I would have at 12 years old heard the Yogg's cast, right? And again, there's cursing in their content. This is, hear me. Simon and Lewis Yogg's cast. I listen to them all the time. 12 years old, I would sit there for 16 hours on a school night. Be happily exhausted going to middle school in the sixth grade the next day. Happily exhausted. To listen to these British-accented guys play Minecraft, vaults, shooting missiles and nukes, laughing it up, talking about Jaffa cakes with the Jaffa factory for hours. I would sit there for my entire day, all of the night, blanket over the head, classic movie scene type of little kid checking out some YouTube and nerd the frick out, bro. Man, you're talking about, yeah, I might have the cool, you know, hippie-esque hair. And yes, I had a hippie-esque high school and, and young adult life. <laughs> but I had the, oh, I don't play this game much at all, hair, man. Growing up, you see some of those pictures, man. I'm the guy who's like, you're about to go play Tekken. No, I never played Tekken, this example. And you just see the guy with that real thin, but like, just that certain texture of hair. You've seen it in the meme. If you know, you know. And he's just like, yeah, I, I kind of play this game. And you know you're about to get rocked, bro. That was me. You know, I, I nerded out about what I nerded out about. The point is, were the Yogg's cast to have been like, yo, this is what's up. Like, I love Jesus, by the way. You know, I would have met. It was so deep. There was a time when I don't even remember what the context was. But talking about, oh, there is no God, someone figured it out. 
just the silliest random thing that you know you just bar stool side of the bar type of conversation that you're just like doesn't mean anything but something just stuck out to me i was like whoa they're talking about god whoa and i realized as i grew up and then of course when i hit the faith it all came to me to realize and wow my head's really bent to realize like <laughs> that stuff matters like you're growing up especially if you're outside of the faith and this is where if you're still here and you haven't just written me off as some kook and you are someone of the deep rooted faith and you're like man my heart is for the lost of course i've just been so rooted in the church man that stuff matters when you grow up outside of even just simply the church even outside of church friends i didn't hear the gospel i didn't understand the fullness of the gospel and really know what it meant until i was 18 years old after i had a supernatural encounter with god when you hear things about god looking for purpose especially walking outside of deep rooted foundational truth in the gospel Man, that stuff matters. It matters even more so when you're talking about someone that you look up to so heavily. Anyways, to continue on with what I was talking about with Windigo and stuff, but we'll kind of bring it in the room. I'll continue and I'll end that subject with this because I don't want to leave you hanging. The point is this gap is being bridged with the relationality of things okay the relationality of i see you you want to speak boldly about the things of christ i want to hear it i want to hear it. i might not openly believe you but i want to hear it that's all that it's about of course it's about reaping it's about fully seeing someone be like i want to get baptized man i want to give my life to jesus we've seen it and i can post the video as a short or as shorts we've seen it I went on VR chat by myself in Texas. Just went on VR chat. So I believe, I know for sure too. I believe a third person even. Just literally five minute conversation. Just like, hey man, what's up? Yeah, this is me. I'm, you know, chilling. Just listening to the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, by the end of a five to seven minute conversation, the person's like, yes, I do want to give my life in a prayer back to Christ, or I want to give my life to Jesus, like, I've heard of him, and something just speaking to me, you know what it is, man, you know it's the Holy Spirit, man, and it's just beautiful, those relational things can happen in such beautiful ways, that's the gospel, that's the type of thing when you see Peter, and 3,000 are saved in a single few hours set of few hours because of the relationality of it all it's beautiful and i might sound intense it's because of the passion i'm not upset it might sound like i'm upset like man is he getting on to somebody is he mad at somebody is there a group of people he's <laughs> chilling out right now like no dude this is the love of christ this is the body of christ this is our purpose anyways continuing on there was, in my Bible school, I listened to, as I'm on my second year of my associates. Now, this is not like a normal Bible school. It's not even accredited technically. However, you can use it later. Point is, I heard the story, and this guy was talking about when he was not saved, but there was an ex-biker who became a pastor, and he was listening to him. Terrible preacher. From the guys, this is the guy's word, guy's words. Terrible pastor, as far as his wording. He couldn't preach a message. If he was going to go sell books, he wouldn't be a very good salesman, if you catch my drift. However, the guy had this huge nose. And that nose stuck with that guy all the way up until, I believe, he was in his mid to late 30s. Speaking about this nose of this pastor and how much it stuck, up, stuck out to him. Stuck up nose. Stuck out to him. And, dude... It hit me so deeply how, as a gaming evangelist, or just someone who plays video games, and it, as the gospel gamer, I mean, it's in the name, right? It is so imperative to me, the big nose of video games. It is so imperative to me, the big nose of different things here and there. You know, the big nose. Like, video games, that's just the big nose. Oh, 
this thing stuck out to me. That's why I see this, but the gospel's included, and maybe it's not delivered perfect. Maybe it's not said perfect. Maybe he's fidgeting with his pen because he's anxious, but it's the gospel, let alone. Or it's just enough of a thing in my heart going weird or this weird feeling that I'm like, I kind of want to learn more. John the Baptist in the book of John, the Gospel of John. I believe if it's not the Gospel of Matthew, it might be both or one or the other. In the Gospel, one of the four Gospels, probably multiple, talks about John talking to King Herod at the time, John the Baptist. And he would speak the things of the kingdom of God, and he would literally be saying things that the king didn't per se like. Man's in the world, he's a king, he's got prostitutes or, or concubines and all these different things in his life. He's drunk all the time. He's probably overeating every night. He, he's just doing everything in the book that is like John's preaching against. He knows that this is not of the Hebrew people. And yet with that, it says that he, something in him was drawn back to it. Something within him was drawn back to it. Okay. And he enjoyed it. And then eventually when his wife's daughter requested the head of John the Baptist at the mother's request, whoever, I, I'm flipping my mind. He was displeased. He was deeply sorrowed. Almost like losing a deep friend or almost just the conviction of knowing what he had to do. But it was at his word he was a king. Okay. These type of things stick with people, is the point of what I'm saying. Those relational things stick with people. Not to dive into what I was talking about with Wendigo, as I'm seeing these relational things tied together, okay? I am watching this stream with a uh, streamer, this video. The and I'm going to pop it up here on the screen. I'm going to show you what it is. And let y'all see it. I'm going to pop open a browser capture. Browser, browser. Oh, whoops. I need a window capture. That's right. Oh. Of course, it's always difficult. Window capture, window capture 2... That's perfectly fine. Okay. So I'm I'm here and I'm watching. See if this is correct. Is this correct? Doot, doot. Properties. I'm here and I'm watching this. Okay. I'm watching the Wendigoon conspiracy theory. Just the other day. And this, by the way, yes, you're reading that number correctly. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's our ad. I'm watching this, and it's literally, I believe, 10 hours, just about, yeah, 9 hours and 30 minutes. And it's just when you can Up hear. In order to dissuade interest. So imagine there is this. Okay. And you can listen to Periodically second. eats things like, I don't know, sharks or whales or whatever. However, it and in this one, the ocean and night, for example, and to show you that I listened to the whole thing, it just opened to where it's at, but where I was at, I don't even think I completely finished it for sure or not. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Anyways, like this one, it's talking about deep sea creature at night or some creature deep in the ocean and that the light basically goes into the ocean and they had this thing and it woke up something and it's a conspiracy in the ocean, giant sea creatures, giant monster. You get what I'm saying. You get the point. And that was just that one out of, gosh, I don't even know how many, how many different ones. There's all these different tiers. Tier 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 tiers. So there's 10 tiers. Each one has probably, you know, 20 to 30 different ones, give or take. Some more, some less. And I'm looking at it all just going... Every single one that I'm listening to, there's a connection to, to Christ, right? 
every single one of these conspiracy theories some of them are duplicates some of them are multiple like oh this is the same thing same thing same thing but every single one of them are the same category and that category directly represents the gospel in some way or directly connects to christ in some way okay and with that realizing oh my gosh that's the connection the interest in each and every one of these things you can have a whole youtube channel for each category you can have a whole youtube youtube channel for each chapter you can have a whole youtube channel for each thing and if each and every one of them had a believer it would be incredible because each and every person would have a deeper connection with this community and blah 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 right when i first made this channel i wanted to know each and every facet of the deeper internets and become the guy that was just you know some this the some that and i know reddit and i know this and that i don't know that right i don't and i've realized 2024 it took me three years just about of youtube to realize i am me that is me i'm not gonna fit that box i'm not gonna fit that category i'm me who I am, this is what I do, and I enjoy it, and I love it, and I love the people that I get to meet and talk to because of it. And I can only be me, with my voice cracks and all. Point being said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right? It's like, anyways, to continue and to solidify that. One, I have something in the works, so I'm going to try and work out with that, because that specifically spoke out to me. Two, the relational gap between people who are in the faith and people who are questioning and even deeper than that that whole thing is going to be bridged with the relationship and we're seeing that more and more right each person in each place has its own part to play and all that xyz but in general there's things going on that i'm enjoying to see and i'm excited to see the other side of this going towards the channel itself so, a couple things I'm doing. One, let me get up. Silly as it might seem. Let me get up, too. I need to, need to fill out the space a little bit. Get a little close. Get a little comfortable with you guys. I've been a little too far away, huh? Been a little bit too impersonal. I've been sitting too far back. I need to get close and comfortable. Hello. Come in here. Love y'all. Silly as it might be. I bought the two most abstract parts to begin building my PC, but I'm building my PC. And I've been saving funds, and I've been researching my absolute batuki off and figuring out what I want to do, how I want to do it, and all that. So for the channel, being able to actually stream games and not have all this confusingness, that's working out too. With Twitch, I had the plan to stream a specific game every single day for a very long time. I don't know if that's feasible. I don't know if that's doable. When I used to do other forms of streaming, there was a whole lot more interaction and enjoyment and actual benefit from it. And I think I'm going to go to that way for streaming. I think I'm going to go back to the OG streaming days where we had the community and it was fun. I haven't had that for a while. And so I think I want to go back, and the first thing I'm going to do is I need to re redo the recording and stream recording of, oh, what was it? It's the To the Moon series, To the Moon, Finding Paradise, Imposter Factory. And I think they're building a, they're making a fourth game, so it's the perfect timing. I don't know how long it's going to be, probably a couple of years, maybe next year. But Imposter Factory, I have to get that done, streamed, all that. Uh... Also, things like Stray, I've been trying to stream and it doesn't work. That stuff's all because of my computer. I would have had those more popular streamed series and streams of the channel up. I'm not going to make the excuse that it is only the computer. I've made the computer work in the past. I can make it work now. Stuff like Garden of Ban Ban, though, stuff like other things. Having the computer to actually run that would and will be an absolute blessing. So that's why I'm beginning the building of that, why I've been saving funds, all that. Um, otherwise on the channel, I want to specifically start putting Christian tags on it. I kind of got the ick, kind of gave me the ick at first 
the idea of being like if you've ever seen cross to crown gaming the idea of kind of being like oh christian talks to a man about jesus on cod like it almost felt weird to me and at the time i'm glad that it did because it wouldn't have made sense for me to do that then but to do it now with the right heart with the right implication i want to really reach out to the believers in chat right and kind of get that rocking so you'll see more of that just letting you know and otherwise than that uh as far as housekeeping everything's pretty smooth you can see i've been back here in washington for a while kind of settled in got the green screen popped up uh there and so that will be usable and not usable. I might be shifting my entire desk over to this area over here. Can't see, but I'm at like a flat. But then both sides to my right and my left go at an angle, like a rhombus. And then it goes from that rhombus to this, which goes flat. Then to the back, which goes flat. And that rhombus right there. And then that rhombus. And then flat all the way up to again the trapezoid i think it's called anyways so i might be moving the thing the desk getting that kind of reset up into this corner and see how that looks there's a shelf up here that's pretty sick and it's got some of my like a couple pops and like mandalorian stuff anyways I, i'll digress i will i digress and i'm gonna chill now we're ending out this this first kind of gospel game cast we've talked about the implementations of the gospel and evangelism and relational heart and really the original heart of the channel of if i can just be in some person's heart just one no matter if it's a young kid who just would, would wouldn't care if it was one sub or ten thousand subs it just goes man he talks about jesus boldly and he plays fortnite i play fortnite he plays minecraft i play minecraft that's super cool I want to know about Jesus, or I'm I'm going to stay steady and strong in my faith, and I'm going to seek him, and I'm going to be bold. And that sparks, you know, it's the butterfly effect. It's the ripple effect. That was the original heart of the channel. That's what I would always tell people about my channel, and that was before to going and talking on stage about it. That was before really subs started going to put where we're almost at half of a G, half of a K, half of a thou, you know, and I just... I've come to not see it quite in that way as much. Well, well, I almost made that sound really bad. I've come to see it deeper than just simply that. <laughs> Someone is like, oh my gosh, this is a bad time. No, I've come to see it in a, a really deeper meaning and a deeper rooted importance than that. As I've really grown and matured with Christ, matured and grown as myself, as a young man, especially the faith in 2024 with all the things going on right now, just in general, man, just in general, just talk about the economy on itself being in 2024 at 22 years old is wild. Just dated myself right there, man. It's just, there's so much to it, you know, business to stocks, to Bitcoin, to AI, to just forget about anything else, just stuff in life in general and following Christ and knowing Christ and all that. By the way, if you're wondering, what in the world is your story? I'm assuming this. Man, I have a wild testimony. And I'm mature enough in my faith to say, yes, dude, it's pretty wild. I've heard enough people say, hey, that's pretty wild. To be like, I'm going to just tell you, it's wild. Go to the link in this description. I'll try to put it in there. If not, it's just called How, I, How Jesus Changed My Life. Something along those lines. One of the first videos on the channel. Go check it out. And listen to my high-pitched voice, just in awe and loving God, which I still am now, just with a little deeper voice and a little bit more walking with him and know, getting to know him and his goodness and his love. Man, he's just love. God is love, First John. I don't remember the exact place. In the... Anyways, go check that out. And you can know how it is I got here because it's pretty insane. It's pretty wild. Anyways, to wrap it all up, I'm sure I've babbled on, gone all across the different things. Again, this isn't a joke. Let me know, because I believe God brought you here. You might not believe me. You might not think that, but I think that. And so whether or not you believe it or not, just tell me, what brought you here? Yes, the comments help the algorithm. Yes, all that. X, Y, Z, that's cool. But I actually do want to know. 
You know, there's other ways to get the algorithm to pop up. There's other videos I can make. This video isn't going to be one of the most popping off crazy videos, most likely. It could pop off, and praise God. I want to know why you are watching this right now. I don't care if this is 10 years in the future. I want to know why this specific one you're watching right now. Okay. Anyways, God bless y'all. I love y'all. If you've never been on here and you're just watching this because you're literally bored or you're hearing this on your TV or your phone on a YouTube rabbit hole that the algorithm inspired by the Holy Spirit brought you here, dude, or do that, I'm happy that you're here. Tell me where you're from. God bless you. Got a good sniff. My allergies are going wild. If you're wondering why I'm like spazzing out, dude, my allergies are out of this world. I'm up here in the P&W, man, and it's just... so. God bless y'all. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all hopefully soon.